Welcome to the second video of reinforced concrete structures. In this video, what I want to cover are some of the formulas that we will be using in the next few videos. So we will start off with a rectangular beam. What is a rectangular beam, right? We have to classify beams based on their cross-section shape. So if a beam has a rectangular cross-section shape, right? This is a pretty much a rectangular beam because it has a rectangle. This is the cross section of a rectangular beam, right? So if I were to draw a beam here, just a simply supported beam, and we have our rectangular cross section. This is our beam, so this is our cross section, and that is pretty much why this beam is called a rectangular cross section beam or a rectangular beam. Now we're going to assume positive moment, which means compression at the top and tension at the bottom. Because there's tension at the bottom, we have rebirth at the bottom because concrete can't withstand um, tension force. So we need the rebirth at the bottom. And usually what happens or what happens when a beam is under stress, this is the compression part and this is the tension part, right? So this is tension, this is compression. So how would the stress diagram look like? Usually or not usually, it actually always looks like this or actually looks like and this is our neutral axis and this is our compression part and this is our tension there's a reason why I'm drawing this because they do modify one of the equations later on so we'll get to that in a bit let's start off with all the different variables that we will be using so this is our neutral axis right a rectangular cross section looks like this and this is how we'll, we will be answering almost all the questions we'll be using the cross section of the beam so if this beam has two rebars over here there are a few things we have the neutral axis and above the neutral axis is the compression zone for positive moment so this is the compression zone right and compression occurs at any point above the neutral axis so any point above this neutral axis compression is occurring and tension is occurring any point below the neutral axis so this is our cross section and this is our width of the cross section which we denote as b so in this beam our width is right over here and then we have H which is our height oops and then we also have what we call effective depth which is the most important parameter in reinforced concrete structures this is the parameter that we use to um, shorten or widen beams and uh, increase or decrease the strength of beams but that's something we'll get to later but just know that this is the effective depth d so if we have two rebars here effective depth is pretty much the length between the top fiber which is right here the top fiber and the midpoint of the diameter of the rebar so we have this rebar here the midpoint of this rebar is our depth our effective depth so from here to the top fiber is our effective depth now what happens if we have two layers of rebars then we would take the midpoint between these two layers now what happens if there are three rebars at the top then we have to use center of gravity and I think our depth would be a little bit higher than the middle of the two layers 
So, but that's something we'll cover later on. But just know that the effective depth is a very important parameter. And this is our H. So our H is from the top fiber to the bottom fiber. And our effective depth is from the top fiber to the middle of the first or second or the median of the rebars. Next, we have A value or C value. C is pretty much the, top, the length from the top fiber to the neutral axis. We denote it as C. And then we have something that's called the compression zone or uh, reduced, not reduced, but um, simplified compression zone which is A. Now what is A? A is equal to 0 0.9 C. Now A is the reduced compression zone and the main idea or the main reason why we have A is because it's very, because eventually in our e equations we will need to calculate the area of the compression zone, right? even though the compression zone area is a parabola we reduced it or we simplified it to a rectangular box because the area of a rectangular is much more easier to calculate than the area of a parabola and then we that's why we also introduced the 0 0.9 because uh, we have like a 10 percent clearance pretty much we use in our calculation so that's why even though compression occurs at any point above the neutral axis, in most of our cal calculations, we use A because A helps us calculate the area of the rectangle um, faster or it, it helps us calculate the area of the rectangle, which is what we need to um, further our design criteria. It will all make more sense to you once we start doing questions, but uh, just know that A is the length between the top fiber and the compression box, which is right here, which ends right here, instead of right at the neutral axis. And again, we reduced it or we simplified it. We don't reduce our compression box, but we simplify to a rectangle rather than a parabola because area of a rectangle is much easier to calculate. So we are pretty much uh, avoiding a complex formula or using a complex formula. So these are pretty much, I believe, all of the uh, all of the variables. There are uh, two more that I should introduce. So this is our neutral axis over here, right? And in this neutral axis, we have a compression force going that way, CR because concrete this is a compression zone and we also have a tension force which is tr so we have compression and we have tension and what's really important to note here is that tension is occurring at the middle of the the at the midpoint of the diameter of the rebar and compression force is on is at the middle of our a value which is our compression box right so compression is coming out out of it, like you can say it's coming out of your monitor screen from the middle of this box and or it's going into your monitor screen from the middle middle of this a box right if i were to use a different color from our a this is our a our A box, our compression box, and our tension is coming out of the midpoint of the diameter of the rebar, which is over here. Now, if we were to calculate the moment, then our moment would equal to MR would equal to CR times D which is our effective depth, right? Effective depth, and we know that C is coming out the middle of this box, or coming into, 
and T is coming out so D minus so what is the length of length between here to there so D minus a over 2 right because our midpoint of a is where compression is occurring or the compression force is occurring right CR TR and at this is a over 2 and this is our effective depth so D minus a over 2 times CR gives us our moment so this is another equation that we will be using to find out the maximum moment that this beam can resist. Now how do we find CR? CR is equal to the FC times alpha 1 times phi C which these two are constants 0 0.8 and phi c is 0 0.65 which we know from our previous video and then we have the area of the compression box which is a times b remember it's not c times b but a times b now this is pretty much saying fc is the stress usually 25 mpa or whatever is specified in the question this is the stress of the concrete that we'll be using usually it's 25 mpa so 25 is our stress stress times um, I guess reduced stress or simplified stress and this is a parameter that we take into account for you know um, rounding off equations and stuff so th these two are constants so stress times the area gives us force that makes sense, right? A times B gives us the area of the compression box times the stress gives us the force. And then we have TR, which is equal to FY, which is the stress value of a rebar, which is usually 400 MPA. Uh, it's specified in the question times the area of steel or area of rebar which we covered in the previous video times the phi s which is a constant I think it's 0 0.8 as well no wait it's 0 0.85 so our phi s is 0 0.85 and our phi c is 0 0.65 so these are pretty much the equations and in the next video what we will do is we will cover three different examples and figure out which technique or what is the most effective method to design beams. Okay, so this is just to explain the different parameters and the different equations we'll be using for the next three examples.